There's been a new zinc battery breakthrough. Researchers have been trying to fix a problem with zinc batteries. One thing has been holding them back. They just don't last long enough. However, that has completely changed now. All they needed was this new additive that is able to increase life of zinc batteries by five to 20 times, which completely changes the game for zinc batteries. They now could be a very viable alternative to lithium iron, especially for energy storage. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Aqueous rechargeable zinc batteries or AZB batteries, they're getting closer, say, reneweconomy.com.au to actually becoming a real thing. Not just a laboratory experiment, but being a real alternative to flow batteries and to lithium ion phosphate batteries and to sodium batteries for energy storage. Apparently, there is a big corrosion issue with zinc batteries. Getting them to work, they corrode too quickly. Very common, in fact, for normal batteries. So you probably think, on my actual life expectancy of my battery or my usable capacity is declined. Partly that's to do with what you could call corrosion. Well, a glycol electrolyte additive improves battery lifespan between five to 20 times, depending on how it's deployed. The equivalent of pushing the lifetime from only a few months with existing technology to many years says a team of researchers based here in Australia from the University of UNSW. AZBs, says renewaleconomy.com.au, are another battery technology that is promising for specific applications such as grid scale storage because they are actually quite high energy density, low cost, and they're very environmentally friendly. So being able to use zinc en masse is, could be a potential solution to the perception by some people, which may or may not be true, that lithium mining damages the environment. And sometimes, in fact, that is true. However, there's been some big challenges with zinc batteries. These are, there are a limited choice of cathode options, as many of the options already in the market don't conduct well with zinc and the electrolyte itself. The battery needs zinc salts to dissolve into water in order to function, but this solution destroys the anode and the cathode through side reactions. So the team at UNSW wanted to fix zinc dendrite formation. Dendrite formation is essentially like a degradation of the battery. It's when spiky crystals form on the zinc anode and cause the battery to short circuit. Now dendrite formation is actually a problem for all, pretty much almost all different types of batteries. It's not just a zinc battery issue. Their work was published in Advanced Materials Journal and says this process quickly exhausts the finite zinc source while dumping byproducts onto the zinc surface, which corrodes it, makes it degrade quickly. The researchers say that they spent three years working on a solution which involved adding small concentrations of organic compounds to the electrolyte. They found that a 1% concentration of butanediol worked the best and approached the storage capabilities of a lithium ion battery. So what will these types of batteries actually be used for? Well, interestingly, they are definitely targeting energy storage. However, they say that electric bikes could be an option because these batteries are very safe and environmentally friendly. So one of the problems when you get an electric bike or an electric skateboard, as I found, um, or an electric scooter, you can't take it on an airplane unless it has a very, very small battery. So you need to be able to do something like um, get a, a, a bike or a scooter that has replaceable batteries that are very small. There's not many options in the market. It's pretty challenging to do so. They believe that airplanes would let you take this battery if this was on your bike because they are so unlikely to have a fire. Renew Economy says that research into zinc batteries shows they're a viable alternative to large scale lithium ion batteries with an energy density of between 50 to 200 watts per kilo, depending on the chemistry, compared to 70 to 250 watts per kilo, but the output power is lower. So that's why they would be perfect for energy storage. In places where bushfires are likely, where it's hot, where there could be all kinds of reasons for the battery temperature getting too high, well, that's where zinc batteries come into their own. This is where the aqueous salt solution electrolyte promises less, significantly less fire risk than lithium. It's also very cheap, it's fully recyclable, and it can be made in ambient temperatures rather than in cold rooms, which would actually reduce the price to produce these batteries. Now, can they really compete against batteries like sodium ion batteries? Well, I don't know. 
truth is we don't know what the cost of these batteries truly are when it comes to mass manufacturing them. So we're probably several years away from that. But I do think if this team has found a solution to extend the life by from say, you know, a matter of early months to potentially 10 plus years, and if they're affordable, it's definitely likely that at some point in time, they will be mass manufactured. I don't know when though. What are your thoughts on zinc batteries? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.